In this video, I'll cover section 114 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek and Intensive course, which talks about enclitics. You can find this in Hansen and Quinn on pages 437 to 439. Now, Hansen and Quinn actually calls this enclitics summarized, and we've talked about enclitics before, but only sometimes in vocabulary notes or other spots, not with its own clear section. Let's first remind ourselves of some of the basic rules of accent. So here is the jargon that we can use and some of the symbols that go with it. Remember that we can only put accents on the last three syllables of a word, and so we have names for those last three syllables. The last is the ultima, the second to last is the penult, and the third to last is the antepenult. And it matters sometimes whether an accent is over a short syllable or a long syllable. Remember that epsilons and omicrons on their own are always short. Etas and omegas are, are always long, and so are diphthongs most of the time. And that alpha, iota, and upsilon can be either long or short. We learned early on that acutes can be over either short or long syllables and they can appear on the last syllable, the ultima, the second to last, or the third to last, but they can only appear on the third to last syllable if the last syllable is short. We learned that graves appear on short or long syllables, but they only ever appear on the last syllable of a, of a word when another word follows on immediately, that is to say, when there's no pause afterwards, and that's when there would have been an acute on the last syllable of a word if there were a pause, but it switches to a grave if there is a word afterwards. And then a circumflex only can appear on a long syllable, and it can appear on the last syllable of a word if that syllable is long, or the second to last, the penult, if that syllable is long and the last syllable is short. So those were our basic rules for accent. We combine those with the next level rules of what you do with recessive accent and what you do with persistent accent to cover all of the accents that we have learned so far in Hansen and Quinn. Now, enclitics are going to complicate this because they are words that on their own don't have their own accent but can affect the accent of the word before. So let's look at how enclitics affect the basic rules for accent both when they are one-syllable enclitics and two-syllable enclitics. And that's how we will notate them in this video as little e's. If an enclitic follows a word that has an acute on the last syllable, no change happens to that accent. And we'll get things like adelphostis and adelphoitenes. The enclitic does not affect the accent on the previous word at all if that's the pattern of the accent. In instances where the accent is over the second to last syllable and it's an acute, with a one-syllable enclitic, there's no change. For instance, hemeratis, some day. But with a two-syllable enclitic, that has the effect of making it feel like this word is two syllables longer because those two enclitic syllables are leaning on the end of the word before and making it feel almost if it, as if it's one whole word. And an acute can't go back to the fourth syllable before the end of the word. That tension of having the accent too early means that we have to do something. So with a two-syllable enclitic, if the last syllable of the enclitic is short, that syllable will get an acute. Hemerai tenes. If the last syllable of the enclitic is long, that syllable in this situation will get a circumflex. Elpidon tenon. So two syllable enclitics after a word that has an acute on the second to last syllable challenges the regular rules for accent just enough that an enclitic will actually get its own accent. If an acute is all the way back on a word, that is to say by the regular rules of accent, and it has an enclitic after it, that also feels a little strange 
for the regular rules of accent and the enclitic will throw back a second accent onto the word. So anthropostis and with a two-syllable enclitic it will do the same thing, anthropoitanes. So here the enclitic itself doesn't get its own accent when it makes the regular rules for accent feel a little strange with too many syllables. So notice these situations in which an enclitic will get its own accent or in which an enclitic will add an extra accent to the word before. Let's go on and see what happens with graves. Graves appear on the last syllable of a word when another word immediately follows. But when you add an enclitic after a word that ends with a grave, it's as if the word keeps going. So there is no new word starting immediately afterwards. And what happens is that grave turns back into an acute. So we'll see that here with Adelfosgar, which has the grave there because there's a word immediately after, or Adelfoy Lue. But when we put enclitics afterwards, those accents change back to acutes. After circumflex words, what we get when we have one and two syllable enclitics after a word that has a circumflex on the last syllable is no change. So we could see Adelfu toy or Adelfu pota. But if a circumflex is back as far as it can go, that is to say the second to last syllable, and it has an enclitic afterwards, we're going to have the same situation we had when an acute was back as far as it can go. And in both instances, it's going to throw an extra accent back onto the word. So, a cana toy and a cana pota. So this again is a situation in which an enclitic will change the accent of the word before. Let me summarize. An enclitic doesn't change the accent of the word before unless it's in one of these situations where an accent is as far back as it can go with an acute that's on the third to last or with a circumflex on the second to last, in which case the enclitic throws an extra accent, an acute, back onto the word before, and in the situation in which you have a two-syllable enclitic after a word that has an acute on the second to last syllable, the enclitic itself will get an accent on the second syllable, an acute if that second syllable is short, and a circumflex if that second syllable is long. And it's important to know these things and recognize them so that you recognize when you're looking at an enclitic form of a word rather than an accented form of a word. That can be the difference between asking a question and making an indefinite statement. That is enclitics summarized for you. Have fun spotting them in Greek in the wild.